Okay, this, for this recording I'm going to show you in Adobe Illustrator how to make a net using the transform palette. This is really important, it's a really vital tool, it's a really good way to learn how to um, transcribe your drawings up to a very accurate um, net on Illustrator and what that does is it makes sure that when you create your design and then go to print it, the whole thing um, works together because you have made your net accurately. So the first thing I want you to do is check your document setup. So you go to file, document setup and just check your units of measurement. Sometimes if it says pixels, uh, pixels are points, it can get a bit confusing. So it's easier for you if you stick to centimetres or millimetres. So that's okay. Click OK, done. Then I want you to go into your Windows drop down menu so this shows you all the things that you can have open in your window and you want to go to the transform palette which we're going to open up here and this all looks a little bit confusing but I'm going to explain it all as we go so that will help you. So I want you to create a, um, a square on your page so you're going to click on the square, click on your desktop um, I've set this already to come up as 6x6 six six, but if you wanted to change that you could just type in your own number there so this is where my um, my square is actually lined up. And what I don't want to do is go moving it, moving it, moving it. What you can see, what the transform palette is here at the moment showing you is the six, six centimeters wide and six centimeters high, which is what we've got here. And we can use that information to like change. Um, if I wanted to constrain the proportions, but I wanted the whole thing to be eight, I could uh, make that eight there. And uh, is that constrained? Yep. So then what will happen is it will make the whole thing eight, which is I don't want to do that. But if I wanted to do that, I can use that in there to do that easily. The other thing is I've got information here about the X and the Y axis. So if you remember from school when you did graphs, you will have had the X and the Y axis to use to work out, to plot a point on a graph. And it's exactly the same thing what you're doing here. So you can see that we've got the x-axis, which goes along here. And then we've got the y-axis, which runs along the top. So what I might just quickly do to remind you is just make a little note of that down along here so that we know, that you know, when you're doing this, that your x and y-axis is this way. Um, where is... Let me open just the stroke a minute and let add a little arrowhead on here, which I can. Oops, that's the wrong way. Oh yeah, I do it either way. That's fine, just make one along there. And then you know that that's the x-axis as we're going through here. I'll get rid of these things, we don't need them for the minute. So, as we go, this is what we've got. We've got our little... Um, box here. It is resting 15 centimeters roughly along the x-axis and 11 centimeters up the y-axis. So what we're going to do is we're going to make that number to about 9 I think and maybe make that just to 15 and as you type in numbers in there it will move that along and what you can see is the point in the middle where it's black that is the reference point on the little diagram here and that is indicating where this point is in the middle of your uh, of your um, square. Uh, what you can then do is find out the information for all the points around your square. So if I click on the diagram on this point, the numbers change because that point is at x 12 centimeters and y 6 centimeters. This point down here is at x 12 centimeters and y 12 centimeters. That one is at x 18, y 12 and that was at 18, y 6. So you can see that the y the y numbers are the same for the for the various points and the x, x numbers obviously change because this is the x-axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another um, rectangle on the page, the same size, and what I want to do is get that lined up equally to this side of the first original um, rectangle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find this midpoint here and it's on 18 centimetres and 9 centimetres. So I'm going to click on this one. And this time we need to work out the number here, don't we? So we need to make sure that is the same as the number on this side because we want that point there to meet up with the midpoint on this one. 
from that point there to join up to that point there. So that point there, 18 centimetres along the X and 9 along the Y. So if we type that into here, 18 centimetres and then 9. Oh, I've done that wrong. So back we go. This point here, 18 centimetres for there. Oh, oops, well, I'm putting it in the wrong place because obviously that's going to overlap. So, I, sorry, you need to make sure that you're on the right point. Guess again, go again. So, you can see me making a mistake, and I've done this obviously several times before. 18 and then 9. There we go. And you can see you now have two beautifully lined up. Um, lovely rectangle so if you are imagining that this was your cd packaging and you had your cd in there let's draw a little fake cd in so you get the idea this is your cd here and obviously you can use the um transform palette to line that up perfectly so let's just put, we might as well line that up perfectly if we can go to the midpoint that's 15 by 9 on that midpoint on the square so let's 15.9 it on here 15 0.9 and that will line it up perfectly beautiful that's lovely really nicely lined up um, so we now have one section coming up the side one section coming up here now we probably want to have another one maybe over here so I'm going to do another example again just to show you how to do it so we remembered that we wanted to line it up with this point here it, we could line it up with anything along here but because this is the middle that way we know that we're getting it dead center on <clears throat> if we wanted to line it up here we could line the bottom of this one up with the top of there and then we'd have our square coming up here um, at the moment we want to line them up properly side by side so 12 centimeters and 9 centimeters click onto our one we want to move this 12 centimeters and 9 centimeters and then brilliantly it will line up for you um, if for instance you had decided that you wanted to have um, and you can obviously quite easily do the same above and below if that's what you want to do um, this is just a little demo but if for instance that you wanted you decided that you wanted to have a different shape here so say you wanted to have like a triangle shape along there, the easiest way would be to delete an anchor point. So if we come in here with the pen tool and we go to the delete an anchor point tool there, I can just click on that one and it will make a beautiful, nice, straight, um, equal triangle. So it's none of this guesswork, it's absolutely perfect and beautiful. So then we've got two folding over sections that can work quite nicely together. Um, if we decided that instead of doing that, we wanted to actually make, um, what, what would we perhaps want to do? We might want to make that into a curved point here. We could actually click, if we select, obviously we've got two selected, so I need to select just one a minute. If we selected this one and then I decided that I wanted to make a curved line, I would collect this, what is called the convert anchor point tool here like so, and I can drag that out um, to make a sort of curved line, and I can then, if I wanted to, drag that point down. Uh, it's not gonna be exactly equal, but you can see now that I've got a nice curved edge, and obviously you could repeat that shape uh, and put it in line over here so that you've got that as a, as a shape. Um, I think for now that's all I can think to show you but obviously as we go through this you may decide that you need some more extra help but just with the lining up part that's really really key that you're using the transform palette correctly that everything is lined up properly because otherwise you might find that when you make your piece of um, CD packaging that it actually does not work. I'm going to leave that there for now.